Hey everyone, I wanted to do a quick video here on how I was able to make two different home assistants communicate and work together. So I've just recently switched from SmartThings. I used SmartThings for five years. It was actually a great infrastructure. Um, I was really unhappy with the Samsung app, right? It was too slow. It took a long time to load. It was kind of un not useful from that perspective. And plus, I just like the open source nature of Home Assistant. I like to mess around. So my architecture is that I've got a house and then about 300 feet away from the house, I've got a shop. And I connect the house and the shop with a couple of ubiquity nano beams. Uh, they work great. It's just like a cable, right? So you can just think of it as a cable. And then, but you know, it's, but it's far away enough where the Z-Wave or um, uh, or Zigbee signal just won't travel, right? So I've got to have an, another receiver. So I have one home assistant in the house, and I also have an Alexa. And I have another home assistant in the shop, and I also have an Alexa there. And simply what I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to turn on and off the lights in the shop from the house and the house from the shop, and I wanted to be able to tell Alexa what to go do. So now my Alexa's uh, talking to me. So I wanted to talk about how I did this. The other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to do this in the cloud, and I was actually happy to pay um, Nobu Casa to, you know, for a cloud account, but I didn't want two cloud accounts. Uh, and that's kind of what you'd have to do to control both of them, right? That didn't seem that didn't seem right. So let me show you what I did. So here is my um, here's my house um, home assistant infrastructure, right? And let me show you what I've got installed. I'm going to talk about the shop lights, right? Because shop is in another location. But first things first is I I'm, I use Node Red and, and and MQTT Mosquito. So the two things that I had to install were Node Red and Mosquito Broker, and you can get those from the add-on store. You know, one of the things about, about kind of programming like this in general, I'm not a programmer, I'm quite a computer person, but I'm not a programmer, and like, you know, just the, the basic activation energy to get this stuff to work is, is really hard for me, right? Like, what exactly format do you need to put in? You know, how do you, how do you type stuff? Like, that's hard, and so I want to show that. So the first thing I did is I went to Configuration, and I went to Helpers right here, and I added this um, this thing called shop light. So here, if you wanted to add helper, I added a uh, toggle switch, and I called it input, or it's called input underscore boolean, and then I called it shop underscore lights, right? So that's what it's called. So now I have this um, this button, and you can add it to your to your Lovelace dashboard. This button, when I push it, the shop lights go off and on, right? Works just like that. Now, how do you connect that to another Home Assistant? hardware in another location so what i did was like i said i used node red and i used i used mqtt so here's my it's very simple right so this is my mqtt shop uh to shop broker and mosquito is the broker you only need one broker you don't need a broker in the house and on the shop you just need one and and let me show you the the uh, mqtt part first right so this just tells me this is mqtt out so this is going to basically send a message out and my the IP address of my home home assistant is is um, 10.0.0.2 port 1883, and then the topic is input underscore boolean dot shop underscore lights, just like I showed you from that um, from that button before, right? So that's that's really it's very simple. That's all it is. And then if I look at um, if I look at my um, you know connection, you just you just tell it. You have to tell it right here 10.0.0.2. Now let me show you a trick. And this is like one of the things that just really annoys me about open source stuff in general is that like, you know, you, you download it and then you got to do some silly thing to make it work. And like, why the heck do we have to do this? Right. So let me here's my mosquito broker. And if I go to configuration, you see there's this little uh, this is a configuration .yaml file and you have to go in and you have to edit your username and password. And by the way, this is a fake password. Um, and then you have to change this uh, require certificate to false. And it's true by uh, default. Now, what a pain in the neck. You got to read the instructions carefully. It's just it's silly, right? But anyway, that's what you have to do. So, you, so I go in and I change those two things. And now my, um, now my MQTT broker works. So back to Node Red. So in this little, in this little, um, in this little thing here, I've got this change state. Um, notification, right? So this is an event. It's right here. You can just, you know, just go add one, just like that. State changed all events. And this, what this does is it just watches, right? So let's just double click on it. I'm going to double click on all of them so you can see what to actually write. And um, I had to first of all tell you what what server, right? So there's, you can see my server is my home assistant. I don't, actually don't think you have to specify that, but you do have to say what the entity ID is. So I just used the exact um, text from 
from that little button, right? Input underscore boolean dot shop dot lights, right? So what happens is this watches the um, that 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 button, and when 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 that state of that button changes, it puts a little message out, right? And the other thing, and this is for me critical for Node Red, is you these little these little mess these little debug messages, right? So you just put a little debug messages. It's the same one. Um, here, I'll delete this one and have the other one on there. And you can actually watch what the, um, when you go here to the debug, you can actually watch what happens. So let me show you, um, let me show you what happens when I push that button. Okay, so here, um, these are both the same, this is both the same node, 10.0.0.2. And here's my shop lights button, and I'm gonna push it, and because I have this little debug message on here, it's gonna tell me what the output of this thing was, right? So here I push the button, and look at that. I have the whole, I have the whole message turned on. So the payload is off, and it is input underscore boolean dot shop underscore lights, right? So basically this topic got, got um, transmitted to the mosquito broker, as um, this is the topic and this is the, the message, the payload. And you, by the way, you can define this stuff. The, um, at least for me, the, the, the syntax is hard to figure out, but once figured out, it's super easy, right? So here I'll turn, I'll turn them on. And you can see payload is on now. Turn them off, turn them on, and it works great, right? So what, I, what I'm doing from my home home assistant is I, am, I, am, I just made up a button and then I, I watch the state of that button and when the state of that button changes, I ship it to the MQTT, right? That's the that's the that's the core of it. Now, let me go over to my to my shop side one. So this is the different one. This is 10.0.0.3, right? And let me just show you. I've got all I've got here installed is Node Red because you don't need the broker. You only need one broker on the network. So here we go. So this is my um, this is my flow, and it's going to look a little complicated. It's not actually super complicated, uh, and I have here both the Amazon Echo stuff and the let one talk to the other stuff. So let me let me start with the one talk to the other. So what I have here is I've got an input um, Boolean shop lights, right? So remember this is exactly the the name of the the thing. But this what this does is this is a client. This listens to that broker. And when the broker gets the message, remember we sent the message to MQTT before, well, this receives the message. And when it receives the message, something happens, right? So let's double click on this and have a look. So you can see, I'm just calling a home broker. And if you if you look at its properties, you can see I'm pointing not at the at its own and not at 10.0.3, but I'm pointing at the home one, which is 10.0.2, right? Port 1883. So that's important. You got to set that up. And then and then the topic, remember the topic, is input Boolean shop lights, right? And so I'm just listening for that that topic. And whenever the whenever the home signals it, the home sends it, this receives it, right? That's how it works. So let me uh, put a little debug in here so you can see it. And then I'm going to go back and just trust me off screen, I'm going to turn, I'm going to push that, uh, I'll go to debug mode so you can see the messages. Uh, now I'm going to push that shop lights from my home uh, home assistant. So let's see what happens. I turn them all on, right? Now why didn't it show up in my, uh, why didn't it show up in my debug? Ah, it didn't show up because I did not deploy the changes. So here I'm going to click deploy. There it goes. Now there's no little blue thing there. Now if I do it, hopefully we'll get it. And sure enough, uh, oh, call service wrong. Let's try it again. There we go. Off. So you see everything went off. Boom. Everything went on. Right. Really happy. So now I've accomplished talking from one home assistant to another home assistant. Right. That's pretty cool. And you can do whatever the heck you want now. You can do all this. You can do all this cool. Um, you know, any, anything you want now that you can have one talk to the other. Right. I can I can go from the shop to the house, the house to the shop, whatever I want. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about how I actually move the lights and also introduce the, the concept of Alexa. So first of all, let's go from let's let's go from my imp, my message out Sorry, to what happens. So you can see I've connected this, there's an off and there's an on, right? And so let's look at the on one for example. So the on is just, you know, I look at the payload, the message payload. And I basically look for on if it's on. And you can see here, this is, you know, this payload's on, this, this payload's off. I just look for on. And if on is true, if, it, if, it, if a message happens and it's on, then it does these things. And the way I have it, the way I have it work is if, if I tell it on, it just turns the lights on. If I, if I have it off, it turns all the lights off everywhere in the electronics bench and closes the garage doors. Um, pretty cool. So then if I look at just one of these lights, you can see that the light is simply one of the entities in home assistant right so pretty pretty easy to do and i tell it to turn it on right and then in the other one you know turn off i'll have it turn off 
So if if the MQTT message comes in and it's on, then it then it tells these th these things to be on. I'm sure. By the way, I'm sure there's a more elegant way to do this. This is the way I figured out how to do it and it worked. Uh, actually, happy if there's comments on how I could be more efficient. I'm a terrible programmer. So same thing for off. If you go to look at look at off here, I'm looking at that same payload, and if it's off, then it does something. And if I look at that same shop light, you can see it turns it off instead of turning it on, right? So that's that's how that works. Now, I've also integrated the the Amazon uh, assistant here, and so this was uh, something I downloaded. This is a um, uh, this is a, a node that I that I downloaded, and you can see what it is. It's um, uh, let me find it here. It's Amazon Echo Hub. Hold on just a second. Here it is. So uh, this is one I downloaded, and you can you can see it's um, Node-Red-Contrib-Amazon-Echo, right? And you, you download this whole thing, and it's so cool because then all you have to do is you you um, you add one of these um, you add one of these um, nodes, and you just give it a name, and that name is what the device answers to. So if I tell it let me go to shop lights. So if I tell it shop lights, if I say, Alexa, turn on shop lights, okay. then look at that. It just turned them all on, right? Because it's listening. Shop lights is just simply listening for this text. It's all you don't have to do any configuration. It happens all locally. It doesn't happen in the cloud. It's really cool. Um, Sorry, this so it, it heard shop lights. I also have an electronics bench. I, I have that one there. I have a spotlight. I have air cleaners for the wood shop. Um, all you have to do is define this, and then from any of the smart speakers anywhere in the house, they're able to uh, control that. So that's pretty that's pretty cool. So now I have the ability to talk to the smart speaker and tell it to turn lights on and off. And you can see I've gotten on and off. I'm sure there's some way to do this without having two, but I don't know what it is. So so I um so I just I just you know wrote it this way. Uh, another one is I've got a spotlight, um, and when I turn the spotlight on. Uh, I wanted to go off in 15 minutes, so I had this little timer and said, you know, after 15 minutes, turn it off. That way, if I forget to turn it off, it'll go off, and then of course I can just turn it off by the by the speaker as well. Um, so that's it. That's how it works. Uh, what I and just let me just review one more time. On the house side, I've got this uh, very simple little switch that I um, that I defined under helpers, and then I watch the state of that. When the state of that changes, I send that as an MQTT message to my broker, which is on this one. And then this one is listening to that broker. It's subscribed to that message. And when it hears it, it says, oh, is it on or off? And then it goes and does the logic, right? So pretty simple. It took me a while to find, figure out, actually. You know, I mean, for me, all this stuff takes forever. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, what do you put in what field, et cetera? But this is how I did it. And uh, thanks for your time.